Welcome to the Parks, Arts, Transparency, and Education Subcommittee, uh, January 28th, 2015. Uh, do we have any call to the public, public comment? No, okay. So we will uh, begin our meeting. Does, is there anybody willing to make a motion? Oh, before I do that, uh, Count, uh, Vice Mayor Waring is on the phone and uh, Councilman Valenzuela will be arriving shortly. Um, okay. Is anybody uh, willing to approve the minutes? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of December 2nd. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, motion carries. Um, for those at home, the items related to the agenda are on the screen. Uh, you, will, you can contact my office at 602-262-7447 if you like more information or, any need, or need any reports that are listed. Items 3 through 4 are on the consent agenda, agenda. I would like to acknowledge the Diamondbacks Foundation, Debbie, who is here, who is our community, the community relations for the Diamondbacks. Uh, I'd like to recognize her, and if she could just please stand to be recognized. Thank you for being here. Uh, as you can see on consent, uh, the item the three, uh, Arizona Diamondback Field at I, I think I'm going to say this Parkway, I, Alcar Park. Uh, they are supporting us, and we are very proud of that. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, anybody want to move the consent? Anything? I'd like to make a motion to a move on item three and four is. Second. All right. All those? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, items five through eight are for information only. And anybody have any? Nothing? Okay. Oh, I have a question on number five. On number five. All right. So number five, please. What is your question, Councilman? I just want to find out how much is the uh, fee increase. Uh, uh, number five, what's the fee increase that we're talking about for um, for all the different facilities from Reach 11, Rose Mofford, Desert West, Maryville? There are a variety of fees that we updated, uh, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, on uh, softball and soccer for tournaments right. because of the scale of the tournaments and for runs at the facilities and I will get you a chart I'm sorry if it's not in the report um, it shows the full scale of the changes prior in and, and um, what the new fees are but they were fairly modest increases catching up with what we're doing elsewhere in the system okay can I ask a, can I ask a question sure. uh, so he said number five yes uh, on my five. agenda, number five is the Head Start monthly report. Item five is the Parks and Recreation Board. Well, I guess I, here, I guess my. Uh, he doesn't have the revised. I, I don't have the. Uh, you have the thing. revised agenda? I do not. Okay. No, I apparently I'm working off an old agenda. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry, can we, can we just pull number five off consent? Is that the, your, the Parks no, the, and Recreation? Asked, the one that he just asked the question about. Okay. It's an information only. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, we're not voting on it. Um, I'm sorry, it just it threw me off with the numbering. Never mind, it's fine. It's just only information. Uh, that's fine. Okay. I'll get detailed back up to yeah. all the subcommittee members on the on the fees. That would be perfect. Thank okay, you. thank you. Okay. And I, I apologize, Laura, if I could just interrupt one more thing. If, just, if there's other changes like that from the one that I'm looking at to the one that you're looking at there, um, if, if the staff could just say, or, or somebody could just text me uh, and let me know that. Sorry about the experience. Hey, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yep, nope, nope. Just threw me off with the numbering. Okay. Any other questions on uh, information only? Nope. All righty. We're moving to item 10. Thank you, Jim. Item number 10, electronic community calendar, and this is for information and discussion. And Tony will be informing us. Uh, Councilman Valenzuela has joined us. He's on the phone.
Good morning, Chairwoman. Good morning. Good morning, subcommittee members. We are here this morning to talk about enhancements to the City of Phoenix electronic community calendar. With me today is Debbie Cotton, our Chief Information Officer. So as you recall, in July of this past year, we launched the new phoenix.gov. It had many different improvements, including an enhanced electronic calendar. Chairwoman Pastor challenged us with improving that calendar, and we created a goal of creating one citywide calendar that lists all City of Phoenix events and activities. The City Manager's Office, Information Technology, and the Public Information Office have been working together to achieve that goal. One of the improvements that we are working on is to make the calendar more visible on the phoenix.gov homepage. Here's an example of what the current homepage looks like. Down in the right-hand corner is where the city calendar currently resides. We plan to move the calendar up on the page, <clears throat> excuse me, over to the right-hand side. You'll see the tab there that says calendar, and we'll be working on that in the next few weeks. A couple more improvements we're working on is to combine the public meetings calendar with the community calendar and to train all of the PIOs to update the content regularly. So at this time, Corey is going to help me go actually to the live phoenix.gov homepage so we can show you what that means. Corey, if you can scroll down a little more. Down the other way on the page. Sorry. Scroll down just a little more, Corey, so the middle part shows. Thank you so much. Okay, so currently, in the at your service area, this was feedback that we received from Councilman Nowakowski and from many residents that they couldn't easily find the city meetings, um, the, the city council meetings, the subcommittee meetings, and the agendas. So when we launched the new phoenix.gov calendar, right in the middle at the at your service, there's the button that says this week's meetings. Corey, if you can click on that, we'll show the council members what that entails. So this week's meetings entails, and just scroll down, um, all of the different public meetings that the city has. Council meetings, subcommittee meetings, the parks board, anything that's a publicly posted meeting. And then if you can uh, click back, Corey, to the home page and scroll down to the bottom right where the calendar is. And then scroll down a bit. So this is what the city calendar currently has. It's everything else the NFL experience that's happening at the convention center. And we've added a lot of this information per your request, Councilwoman. We, uh, the PIOs have been working really hard to be sure to include updated information on the calendar. There's the coffee with the cop. There's all of the different transportation open houses that are happening, the household hazardous waste events that happen in the districts. Well, what we're going to do is take those two calendars and combine them together. That isn't set up um, mm -hmm. that way right now but we're going to take those two calendars, combine them all together so that a resident, anyone who's visiting the calendar has just one place to go, and that is the phoenix.gov slash calendar, and they'll get everything from the public official meetings to all of the different um, citywide events and activities. So that's another um, item that we're working on. IT has been very helpful, and we thank you for looking at the technology and exploring ways to, to make that possible. Corey, if you can scroll back up to the top, so those are the improvements that we're working on to date. One other area, though, that we need to do a bit more study is you'll see up at the top where it says view the Phoenix Public Library calendar and view the Phoenix Convention Center calendar. Those are two calendars that are separate from the city's site. So IT staff is working with those two departments to see if there's a possibility to combine those calendars into the city's site. Tony, where is that? We're on phoenix.gov slash calendar. Right, but where the two Where other... the library is. So uh -huh. Corey, if you can click on. Oh, I see. Then we have a, we, okay. As an interim yeah. step, we put a link up okay. at the top. The challenge that we have, though, truly is that the library, we've got lots of different branches, mm -hmm. and they have hundreds of activities and events. This is their calendar. Uh, it has its own search function and is loaded with lots and lots of great opportunities for the community to come in and, and participate in all different events at all of the branch libraries. So the, the challenge that we're talking through is, is there technology that can combine those two calendars together? Is there? 
Debbie. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, we don't at this point have any information on the type of technology used by the library. It will take a bit of time for us to really understand it before we can give you a firm answer. And we also added the link right below the public library link, and that's the Phoenix Convention mm. Center calendar. That links directly up to theirs. But what the Convention Center is doing is also populating the city's calendar with the big events, like the NFL experience, um, like the auto show that happened mm. this past fall. So they're, they're populating the citywide calendar with all of that important information. And Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, it's my understanding too that the convention center is going to be moving to the same technology as the rest of the city. Therefore, integrating those calendars will be much more seamless. So that concludes our presentation today and we're happy to answer any questions. Tori, can you go back to the convention calendar or even the library? Um, for me, for a visual, and I don't know about anybody else, but for a visual, that's really pretty and attractive to then want to go and click. Um, I know a calendar is uh, just a daily calendar. Is, it has a lot of items, but like, that's really um, engaging, I guess the word is what, what I'm looking at is engaging. Um, and so I'm not sure how, it's up to you guys, but I'm not sure how, uh, if we go back to, Corey, if we go back to our calendar on our website, uh, that's not as, I guess, it's a lot, I know it's going to take a lot, but it's not as engaging and I'm wondering, and it doesn't have to be, because if you click on it, then it, cl it moves you to a different spot, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Like if, if we clicked on NFL experience, where would that take us? Okay. So um, um, I think it's great that uh, we're moving this way. Uh, it's more effective and efficient and people can find the information faster. Uh, and I am glad that we're, we're organizing and, and working with one another to, to move and get all our events all in one calendar so that anybody in the community could click on anything and see where, where information is and where they can go. So um, thank you for doing that. I know it's been a long haul, <laughs> but thank you. Great. Councilman, Councilman Nowakowski? You know, I think our homepage looks great. I, I agree with the um, chair is that... Um, after looking at the convention center and all those pretty pictures and all that, is there a way for us to put something on ours where, like the parks and, I mean, this subcommittee, we can have different icons maybe on there or, or create an icon for each of those subcommittees. I know we have um, logos for our villages, so maybe you have the village logo on there. Or, so something that when you, when, you, when you turn to that, like right there we have our homepage, it's something pretty and something that people are enticed to actually open up or sure, definitely so councilman we'll look into yeah. that can i uh councilman can i say something or sure. sure uh i i think the website i think councilman yokowski used the word great or something like that i'd say i'd say it's definitely improved there's no doubt about it it's definitely a cleaner look than it was before it is more attractive and has better pictures as i peruse through it i just i always worry um, not to disagree with, with Michael, it's just sometimes I think we get so much stuff up there, it just it almost makes it hard to navigate. Maybe that's just me, but uh, so just one man's opinion, you know, maybe just be careful about adding too much stuff. Um, you know, I, I just keep it basic, at least at the start, so people can work their way through it step by step, and as they get more depth with it, um, then they'll figure out where they want to go and so forth. I just, I would hate somebody to miss finding where you pay your water bill or something like that because we got a lot of extra stuff. Um, so that's my only thoughts. It's, and again, it may be one man's opinion. It's just I'm not as web savvy as some. So thanks. No, I, I, think, I think that's a, a great comment because sometimes when it gets cluttered and it gets really busy, then we also get frustrated in trying to look for something. So it, I, I can just tell you it was hard to find stuff for me both before I was a candidate, when I was a candidate, and then frankly after as a council person. Um, I, I just thought it was not necessarily logically laid out. It's definitely improved now. There's no doubt about it. I still say, I think other colleagues I've talked about this would agree, you know, there's still a ways to go. But I do worry if you just throw so much stuff up there, it just gets a little bit. I mean, I found that on other websites. It's not like it's just the city of Phoenix. It's just the cleaner and simpler, the better. And uh, again, it may just be my opinion, but it sounds like maybe it's not totally in a minority given your comments. So thank you.
<laughs> and an easier way to navigate to it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm complicating it or <laughs> so. Uh, and all of us have calendars, and we have a number of activities. So I have a city calendar on Google, and then I have on top of that my personal calendar, and then on top of that I have my uh, kids' activities and calendar, and then I have uh, another piece of my other uh, position and all the activities that I'm doing in there. And the way I had figured it out to, to because it does get cluttered and then you, you get confused where you need to be and go, I had figured out with Google and different things to how to overlay the calendar, but uh, that's probably more complicated than anything. But, you know, ways if, if, if visually for somebody, if they want to pick on a date, maybe they pick on that date and then they have tab to pick on, uh, pick, not pick on, pick uh, that department and then it goes on a calendar. I don't know. I don't know. That's up to you, Debbie. <laughs> I just want to be sure that I understand your your request, Councilwoman. So, are you saying that you'd like to be able to see something on your on a city calendar, and then to be able to have that promote to your personal city calendar? Is that is am I understanding? No, it, I'm just saying that just, that's how I oh, that's how that's you that's how I operate oh, okay. with all my activities. Okay. That then they overlay on top, and so if if I choose, I no longer want to see my personal calendar. I tab it off, and then I have just my city activities. Right. So I don't know. Okay. It's it's up to you guys. Corey, if you don't mind scrolling down to the bottom and clicking on the city calendar again, one thing that we do have on there is on the left hand side, um, when whenever there's an item that's added oh, to the calendar, it. it populates over on the left hand side by department <laughs> or area. Oh, um, so that is Good. one way that we try to do it. Um, but we. Thank you for the feedback on the um, adding some visual elements to it. Um, we'll definitely work on that. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for your feedback. We'll, we'll balance it um, and, and still making it easy to read and easy to find. Thank you. Any other questions? None at all. Well, thank you so much. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're uh, Mr. Chair, can we go? I have a question for number nine at this point. We're at nine, nine we will be. Uh, Are we going to? We'll be, we're going to go back, back to it. Okay. I'm just. All right, perfect. We'll go back to item number nine. I'm going to do 11 and then nine. Perfect. All right. Okay. Uh, item number 11 approval to release request for qualification for early Head Start child partners for discussion and action. And thank you, Mo, for being here. Uh, yes, Councilwoman uh, Pastor, Chair, and members of the, the subcommittee, thank you so much. First, let us thank you for the leadership and uh, guidance you've given us in applying for this Early Head Start Child Care Partnership grant. Uh, as you now know, we have, in fact, been awarded uh, 188 slots of early childhood uh, to put into uh, child care centers. It's a little over $3.3 million annually. Uh, when we applied for the grant, there were specific zip codes that the federal government has de had designated as high poverty, and those are the zip codes that we applied for. They happen to be in the Alhambra, Cartwright, and Isaac School Districts. Another part of the grant was that at least 40% of the slots that we administer have to be already receiving child care subsidy through the state. As a result, the partners that we select already need to be um, contracted with the Department of Economic Security to provide the child care, contracted with uh, the Department of Health Services and have their child care license. And they also need to be participating in the federal nutrition program. This is the federal program uh, that reimburses agencies that are doing Head Start, Early Head Start, and other programs like that. They re get reimbursed for the food that they serve to the children. Uh, as a result of partnering with specific agencies that are already having to be licensed, we, we really know who they are already. And so what we need to do is go out for a request uh, for qualifications, and that's why we're here for your approval today, uh, we need to find out which one of those partners are, are interested in this program and, and collaborating with us. Uh, we need to find out about their current and their future capacity in terms of how many slots they can administer, uh, the qualifications of their staff, because we'll need to bring their staff up to the uh, Head, early Head Start standards, uh, the quality, of course, of their program with uh, DES, with uh, 
the Department of Health Services and with the federal uh, food program. And of course, their experience in those areas, uh, their years in uh, child care business in the federal nutrition program, as well as their financial status. Uh, so that is the criteria that we use uh, to put out the request for a proposal. Um, in looking at the guidance that you've given us in the Head Start program, we have crafted uh, this program to have one early Head Start rate. That rate is $53 per child per day, and we've made it per child per day to coincide and, and mimic, if you will, the already existing child care system. These providers will already be used to that system. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for them. Uh, for those children that are already receiving uh, subsidy, uh, we will deduct the subsidy they're receiving for that child and we will pay the balance. Uh, we will also have the ability uh, to pay up for up to two absences per child per month. Uh, and if they lose the DES subsidy, we can provide uh, ongoing eligibility for another three months, which is a really important uh, part of the program. There is also funding for uh, professional development in, in the uh, form of stipends for their teachers. It'll be very important that they have time to go to classes, that they be able to uh, get the courses they need for their credentialing. And then we have, we can use up to $30,000 uh, to bring the environment in the classroom uh, up to early Head Start standards. So these are very good uh, reasons for a child care partner to want to be involved with this. And so, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, we're here, and you are a governing board for Head Start. We're here to um, uh, ask that you recommend City Council approval to release a request for qualifications for us to be able to contract with uh, 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 child care partners. Um, Councilman Nowakowski? I'd like to make a motion to approve staff's recommendation. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Thank you, Mo. That was the fastest. <laughs> and I'm so sorry, Patricia Nightingale, our deputy, I didn't even introduce her. She did all the work, so I, I want to thank you, her. And... You're moving, you're moving. I know it, I know. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Mo, well, if she did all the work, what do we need you for? You were wise not to you were, you were wise not to not to introduce her. That was smart politicking. Good job. Whoa, Mo. <laughs> thank you, Vice Mayor. <laughs> All right, we are going to item number nine, uh, Fit Phoenix update. Hi, Mr. Burke. Hello, Madam Chairman, members of the subcommittee. Today we're bringing you an update on the Fit Phoenix program, which is an initiative started by the City Council in 2013. And I'm going to ask John Brodsky to do the presentation and give you the update. I'm sure you'll have questions. John is the guy who does all the work on this. I don't know why I'm sitting here. If you don't want me to be, I'll go sit down in the back. <laughs> I like having him here. John's a, John has really been doing this as a one-man show since it came to the Parks Department. And I think you'll recognize that a lot of materials covered. He's gotten a lot of grants to help the program go and, and develop. And we're, we're heading in a very exciting direction. So uh, with that, John. Please. Thank you. I'll take three seconds to acknowledge that, yes, the Cardinals did beat the Eagles this year. So <laughs> I am wearing the we shirt. We weren't even going to go there. Well. So, uh, so happy to be here, <laughs> Madam Chair and Council members, to uh, tell you a little bit about Fit Phoenix. We had lots of fun, wonderful, successful initiatives uh, over the past year and looking forward to many more in 2015. As you know, a citywide healthy living initiative uh, started by Mayor Stanton and Councilman Valenzuela and, of course, Misty Hyman, our Olympic gold medalist uh, and uh, spokesperson. And really, the idea is to bring healthy initiatives to all around the city. The concept is that city infrastructure, programs, and leadership can make a very positive impact on the health of the community. We're working now to really take it to another level, uh, having a mission statement, performance measures, and uh, goals. And we're working with uh, city staff from multiple departments and St. Luke's Health Initiative to make that happen. And we're, we're excited to have that for you uh, later on this year. The focus areas that you see there on the screen are really some of the areas that have come up through studies from the Maricopa County Health Department, all of the things that, that we hear about, the articles that we see about health problems. And we're looking at programs that really get people moving, get people learning about healthy food, and can make a dent in some of these areas. The website, phoenix.gov slash FITPHX, Phoenix, has a lot more information. And we're really uh, pleased that we were able to 
uh, work on a number of mutually beneficial partnerships this year and grants more than $135,000 have come in for Fit Phoenix programs over the past year. We were out at about 100 plus events uh, in 2014 and we have representatives from 16 different city departments and also fantastic interns from Arizona State University that have helped us move forward. Uh, most of you probably have heard about uh, what we're calling our signature program now started in November called Meet Me Downtown Phoenix. It's a weekly community walk run three plus miles and we've had hundreds of thousands now of blinky lights walking around downtown every Monday night. Of course it goes through our parks in the area, Heritage Square, Hans Park and Civic Space Park and we've had activation of those parks and really different people who we've seen out there, which is, which is so exciting. A lot of really good stories if you ever come out and walk and just talk to people. Yeah, Sounds thanks. like fun. It is a lot of fun. Fun community event where you're all, it's like putting a little sugar on the strawberries for the kids. People are doing something that's healthy for them and they don't even know it. We've had more than 2,600 participants in the first 12 weeks, really good social media, 900 plus uh, Facebook likes already. The website is meetmedowntownphx.com. And we do want to thank our title sponsor, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona and our partners, Downtown Phoenix Inc., Cityscape Phoenix, The Corner Restaurant, Soul Sports Running Zone, the Phoenix Parks Foundation, and we've had great help from the organizations around all of the, the parks downtown too, which has really added to it. Right in line with that is the Walk Phoenix program. We're pleased to uh, talk about our new $25,000 grant, another one we're getting from the Coca-Cola Foundation. Uh, and really it's funded at 15 different parks, the mileage markers and the signs mapping the park that you see here. We've had openings at some parks all around the city and the new grant will enable us to do some walking programs which will, which will add to that. And these are our, our additional site partners besides Coca-Cola who have uh, contributed and become partners with the Walk Phoenix program. We're also working with natural resources to figure out how to get some things out in the trails and utilize the Walk Phoenix concept there. That's now, more my pace, yeah, the walk. The walking <laughs> the walking walk. is great. <laughs> Walking works and it gets pe get people moving is what, is what we say. Uh, the Born Learning Trail is a program we started at Pierce Park in East Phoenix. We had a great volunteer installation where uh, UPS and the Valley of the Sun United Way were our partners on that. And these signs are really neat. They're really about literacy, walking with your kids, teaching them about physical activity, and also teaching them how to do different things like the hopscotch you see there. And Griffith Elementary, right across the street, a boss elementary school, has been utilizing it. And our park staff tells us that we're getting a lot of good utilization from folks at the park, too, just getting out there and walking with their families. The Fit Phoenix Energy Zones is a program that we're very excited to expand this year. Just the week, this week, we're starting the third session of it. The partners on that are Mayo, ASU, OBC Solutions, and the Maricopa County Department of Public Health. And we're doing physical fitness and nutrition. It's a free program for the tweens, kids aged 10 to 14. Uh, one student lost 15 pounds in 10 weeks during the program. Those kinds of success stories will help us move forward. And many who had a high body mass index uh, lost a percentage of BMI during the program. The second pilot session in the fall had 2014 students. Had, uh, fall of 2014 had 60 kids in it. I over, overestimated there. Um, the pictures really tell it. On the left, you see Maryvale Community Center with uh, our kids in the Fit Phoenix Energy Zones program and Harmon Rec Center and the kids, uh, Harmon Library, and the kids that you see, the older ones, are actually ASU health students who are teaching the program, mentoring the kids. That's another wonderful partnership, getting ASU in the community at Maryvale Community Center, uh, Palo Verde Library, and Harmon Rec Center and Harmon Library. Uh, we're also working with U of A, so we're utilizing all of the university partners, U of A College of Medicine Phoenix students on their monthly visit uh, to Verde Rec Center, and then in December, about 86 kids came over from Verde and a few of the other downtown area parks and actually visited the med school and learned from, from med students. In February, we're focusing on careers and that's just a wonderful program that we're going to keep going throughout the year and hopefully long into the future. Hitting businesses is another key because like working with schools, working with businesses, you can just get out to a lot of people. So it's called the Healthy Arizona Worksites Program. It's a partnership with Community Economic Development, the state and the county health departments and the Arizona Small Business Association We've had three sessions, gotten 50 businesses in there where they learn just health strategies for how to be healthier in the workplace. We call them Fit Phoenix businesses and they represent more than 100,000 employees, three sessions scheduled for 2015 now. Other neat programs we're working on are trying to figure out how to get some of the schools uh, in low income areas especially to open up their playgrounds and fields to the community to have another place for kids and families to get together and recreate and also working with the Plan Phoenix on the health concepts that are in the general plan that there's obviously going to be a lot of talk about this year. 
other programs and partnerships. Phoenix Children's Hospital has a great uh, partnership with Coles Fit, working with the After School Pack program. Uh, if you've been waiting for a plane at Sky Harbor, you've probably seen the Sky Harbor Fitness Trail signs past security in Terminal 4. These seniors at the Helen Drake Senior Center were happy participants in the Fit Phoenix Passport program, which won a national award this year. And then we're one of seven finalists competing uh, for a St. Luke's Health Initiatives grant out of 34 who submitted. The concept is having doctors write prescriptions for physical activity to get people to our parks, our community centers, our senior centers, and other uh, sites that can help with physical activity and getting, getting people healthier. Phoenix Food Day, the picture on the left there, the, the mom told me that that was the first time she brought her little one out and she got to be part of our Fit Phoenix Apple Crunch, the kids' fun run on the right. We've had for two years through great the Phoenix Youth Sports, the Phoenix Plays program at Rose Mofford Sports Complex, walking and biking programs that the city have, we've tried, has, we've tried to participate in. And again, working on that mission statement, perform, performance measures, and finding additional community partnerships to help move Fit Phoenix forward. So uh, any questions that you may have, happy to answer them. And thank you very much for your time and, uh, and for your support of the program. Councilman Nowakowski. So how do we actually measure our success on this? That's a, that's a really good program. So far, we're doing things like number of events, number of people that have been in the program, number with Meet Me Downtown Phoenix, the number of participants, the people who are registered. What we're doing now is working closely with a facilitator from St. Luke's Health Initiatives who's an expert in this, and we have department reps from different departments, and along with doing mission statement and goals, we're going to set some specific performance measures. We wanted to take the first year to get our initiatives moving, to get people talking about Fit Phoenix and knowing about the program, and now we're going to take it to the next level, and having more defined performance measures is part of it. Yeah, because um, every time you hear the news or you read a magazine or so, they talk about how Maricopa County is like 61% of adults are overbeast or overweight, and that, um, and how do we change those statistics? I mean, are we feeding those numbers out there so we can start changing that image of, especially Phoenix, right, out there in the nation? Because um, it's it's sad where I don't I'm not even sure where we rank on a national level. Do, do you happen to have that? There are, there are different statistics, and in most of those uh, indexes, we're somewhere in the middle. Uh, and obviously, it takes a lot of people to get together and really work on that. Maricopa County has a wonderful partnership called the Health Improvement Partnership of Maricopa County, HIPMC. And they're bringing together all different organizations that have anything to do with health. And they're creating those links and those partnerships. So getting those groups to work together. And they have some defined goals. And some of their goals are things that we'll look at either adopting or, or facilitating making more specific for the city of Phoenix. Well, what I like about the program is you're really changing people's lifestyles. You're getting people out there to walk, play, and it's not just children, it's their, ad, it's their parents also. So I think that we got a great story to tell. How do we tell that story and how do we share those numbers so we start changing that, that image that we have out there, and not only within the state of Arizona, but throughout the whole United States, right? Councilman Nolkowski, members of the subcommittee, that's a great point. And part of our mission is to figure out ways working with you to communicate that story and through as many vehicles as possible and as many successes. But I think John's really hit on a point, the one example of the, the child who lost 15 pounds. We need lots and lots of data like that so we can make the comment or make prove the point that one step at a time you can change people's lives. Is it possible to do pre and post surveys like, um, like on the Monday? those that sign up or however we register them pre you know where are you uh, where are you now or today where would you like to be tomorrow and um, and then maybe in the middle have them set goals I don't know yeah that's a fantastic that's idea and with energy zones with the program at Harmon Maryvale and Palo Verde library we're, we're they're doing exactly that okay. so our partners from ASU the students and Mayo Clinic they're doing survey research and they're figuring this out and getting more and more kids involved. And it's a program that can spread all around the city and even beyond. We're, we're trying to get some different grants for that, and we hope to really have that grow. And that's working in, in neighborhoods with kids in need where, where we can find out a lot and learn a lot from stats just like you, you, you mentioned. Thank you. And, you know, going out, the um, chairman's um, recommendation, I mean, even having these thermometers where you mm -hmm. set goals of how much weight you want to lose in each area and, you start having that competition between uh, rec centers or even parks or even 
the individuals walking downtown, I mean, how much, how much weight have they lost as a combined group of individuals? And if you start off with how much you weigh and then maybe in a month from now, we lost a thousand pounds throughout, you know. So we start that conversation. I think it's about branding and imaging the city of Phoenix as being a healthy and fit Phoenix, right? So I think we need to have branding the stuff that's out there, right? Um, we have a speaker comment card. Anybody else? Uh, Vice Mayor, Bye. have any questions? I have a couple of comments, Ms. Daniel. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm going to go to the speaker comment card and then we'll come back. Uh, Joseph Vinesh, good to see you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and, and members of the, of the subcommittee. I'm here both as a citizen and as a member of the Hans Park Conservancy. And I want to say first uh, with that I applaud this Fit Phoenix and, and thank you all for, for doing it, moving it forward. Second, to highlight some of the, the deeper partnerships that are emerging because of this, and, and uh, Jim knows this, that the Hans Park Conservancy is pulling together the stakeholders on the park, and we are, as the stakeholders, adding to those Meet Me Downtown uh, activities, we're bringing in uh, the, the library, the Japanese Friendship Garden, we're all going to be providing extra activities on those Monday nights to help augment that experience, which is, of course, is good for us, good for the park, and good for <coughs> the citizens. And then the last one is, I, I've heard a couple of times now, I think Roger mentioned it the other week, and Louise just mentioned it, uh, the idea of maybe a park calendar, I don't know if that exists, we saw the one for the libraries. Um, but something like that might be helpful as well to, for some of the citizens to see a park calendar where, uh, and I don't know if it's hiking and or activities or all of the above, but I've heard that mentioned a couple times now. I wanted to say it here. Thank you. Good idea. We'll look into that. Thank you for being here. Uh, Vice Mayor, you have any questions? Uh, I'm uh, I uh, you know, appreciate the effort. Hello? Vice Mayor? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, sorry. I just said uh, uh, no. I appreciate the effort. Uh, uh, I think I'm good, but uh, but appreciate the effort of staff and everyone for making this work. Councilman Valenzuela. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hey, John. Thank you uh, very much for everything that, that you are doing. And, and Jim, you, you know, like you. This is your department, Parks and Rec Parks and uh, Recreation. So you deserve a lot of credit, but. You deserve even more credit because you're giving credit where credit is due, and John Brodsky has been a blessing to this program. Um, now, think about this for a moment. The, the city of Phoenix has more than uh, you know 300 programs to help encourage people to live healthier, safer lives. Everything from you know water aerobics with seniors to firefighters uh, installing car seats properly and, and teaching parents to do the same thing. All of these programs are out there. They're sort of scattered. And, and that was the first thing that, that was done under this program by John Brodsky. You know, now we have an inventory. If you go to phoenix.gov slash Phoenix, you will see the, the, the many different programs that the city of Phoenix has. And that kind of goes to the, the point of branding this city, what we aspire to be. Yes, you know, the results will come, but, but we have to we have to take these incremental steps. And the first thing to do is, just like anything else, maybe take an inventory. Where are we? What do we aspire to be? Where do we aspire to be? Who do we aspire to be? We aspire to be one of the healthiest cities in the country. And uh, and, and so that's, that's what the story is being told. Now, if you listen to, to Mr. Banesh and, and his comments, and that's exactly right. Not, not only are we helping to, to create a healthier uh, city, but we are including our small business sector. We're, we're including the arts. We're including the, the you know, the, the universities, which I think, John, what, you know, great idea doing those things, working with ASU and the U of A and, of course, GTU, and, and the list goes on. You probably should sit down with uh, Councilwoman store and talk about the community colleges. I mentioned that before she mentioned it to me. So, but there's all these different things. And the other thing that I don't know if you mentioned in your in your uh, presentation, 
but you know, we we want to plan this so much that now, if you know, for any of our travelers who are flying into Sky Harbor Airport, who are in uh, Terminal Four on the secure side of Terminal Four, if you are if you have a layover, which I think probably most of us have experienced a layover of a couple of hours at least, there is now a 15 inch walking trail, and you know. It's Really great concept. You're able to walk through this trail, see the, the different points of pride throughout the city. There are signs pointing to, you know, for example, South Mountain. Say a little bit about South Mountain and, you know, uh, with the, the new tower or whatever else. So we are we are promoting the city while we are uh, encouraging people to live healthier, safer lives. I do want to thank Blue Cross Blue Shield for being the title sponsor of BP Downtown because that has really taken off and. Uh, and of course, all of these programs are really taken off. Uh, uh, working with the Maricopa County and and uh, all the different partners for the Healthy Worksite uh, program, you know, these are all employees in the private sector. Well, many of them are in the private sector, and many are in the public sector. But at the end of the day, if our if our workforce, public or private, is healthier, then it's good for all of us. Uh, money is being saved, and, and mo- even more importantly, people are living uh, healthier lives. So I, I think you're really on to something, John. I, I applaud your organization, uh, your organizational skills, uh, you know, because I know that going down this path, we will uh, we will get the results that, uh, that we set out, which is, again, to create a, a healthier city. But all of the byproducts are already happening. The small business sector is benefiting. You know, talk to any of the small businesses that are on the, the trail for Meet Me Downtown. You know, it's already happening uh, in the education sector. Talk to, talk to the, the partners uh, that John has reached out to in the uh, education sector and, and on and on. And you just heard Mr. Ben Ash talk about, uh, you know, what, what he plans on doing and what he's already been doing. Uh, with this program as well. So I'm really happy about it. Thank you all. Uh, John, thank you, and thank, thanks uh, to my colleagues for supporting it. Um, I just have one last comment besides a thank you. Uh, could we look at uh, the tennis courts or the tennis area to do some type of fit Phoenix so that uh, Vice Mayor Waring could go out there and... and <laughs> I would have really appreciated em- it. Embarrass myself? Is that the word you're... i like to video word? that. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get the chance, my <laughs> friend. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh, you have a... Uh, sorry, Councilman yeah. Nalkowski. Um, I, I had a chance to go to Austin, and they actually have wellness breaks during their 15-minute uh, breaks. They were talking about how a lot of their employees would walk out and smoke a cigarette or actually go and have a donut or so. So what they've been, been encouraging is a wellness break, which is 15 minutes of walking around City Hall, up the stairs, around the building. The other thing is that they have this uh, fruit um, bar where they basically have a 15-minute wellness break um, eating fruit instead of um, Candy. candies and donuts and all that kind of stuff. So there's best practices that are out there that we can probably steal and, and adapt as our own. But I think those are the kind of things that we as a city, if we can become that that example for corporate America and just pass that on and really share it with people and start branding it as that, hey, we're going to do wellness breaks. We're going to actually go out and walk downtown Phoenix um, and we're going to do all this fit Phoenix. I mean, I think the whole branding campaign that you all are are starting up will be great, but I think we need to start thinking outside of the box and see how we can actually use some of our, um, our employees as pilot programs too, right? Thank you. I demand to know what Councilman Nowakowski has against donuts. <laughs> uh, Again, it's like the, like the website. It might just be a personal opinion, but they're tasty. The community college is doing a really good job at that, and uh, that would be within our within Phoenix. Um, they they promote that, and we have a, a schedule. And anybody that wants to go walking at a certain time, we meet under the tree, and we go walking for 15 minutes. It's a great social engagement to get to know one another, especially if you don't know each other in different departments. But uh, they do uh, promote that. 
Thank you. And you know, one of the funny uh -huh. things is um, there was a, a school that actually had massaging um, chairs that you actually, a part of their wellness was sitting down for 15 minutes and getting a, a chair massage. It was, they had about four of them spread out through the um, teacher's lounges. And it was interesting. I was going, wow, what a waste of money. But then it turned out to be really productive because it gives the teacher a chance to get away from all the children and just take 15 minutes to relax. And they come back energized, and they produce even more. They, so it was interesting to see how, you, at first, you think, wow, how in the heck can you take a 15-minute massage? But then at the end of the day, what it produces afterwards and the material that they had that it actually, and the data, that actually produces more at the end of the day. So. De-stressing. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, I have no uh, comments cards, no call to the public. Any future agenda items? So, Councilwoman, can I just make a question, please? Councilman Valenzuela? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, just, I, wanted to make I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? A little bit. That's okay. I'm, I'm on my way up, so I'll see you in a second. Are you here? Okay. Yes, actually, I am. You go ahead, Laura. Continue with your uh, with the okay. Meeting. Any uh, future agenda items? You know, on our um, public safety subcommittee, we have a monthly report of our budget for um, public safety, <laughs> our courts, and all that. And seeing that we're getting into the um, budget season, what I like to do is maybe each of our committees, um, we can allocate a half hour so that they can go over what their proposed budgets are so that we can actually maybe give some input on that. Okay. So maybe if we can start with parks and the arts um, the following uh, month and basically just have what their proposed is and then if we can actually look at year to date from um, this year and then if we can look at the previous year, um, year to date, that uh, we can have some comparison of, uh, of their budget. Well, thank you for that comment, and we will look, um, I will work with you on, since I sit on the Public Safety Committee, uh, look at that template and uh, get it out to the departments. Perfect. So thank you. Anyone else? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thanks.